Hello, everybody, and welcome to Quest for Creative episode. I believe we're on 12. I forgot to look that up before I started the video. Eh, whatever. Uh, to, uh, yesterday, we went over the Project Red pipes because I was having problems with the ducts uh, where it was, uh, they were losing the connection with each other and they, you know, weren't connecting to the lockers of infinity anymore. Uh, so I switched them all with these Project Red transportation pipes. And so far, they actually seem to be working fairly well. I logged in a couple of times uh, over the course of today and yesterday when I recorded that episode. And they seem still seem to be connected and they still seem to be working. So hopefully that does exactly what we want it to do. Uh, these, uh, the ducts here, also seem to still be working. So the short trips on the ducts seem to work, but the long trips on the ducts don't. Now today, we are going to be taking care of that problem that I keep talking about where I'm out of gold. Well, okay, we're not going to be taking care of that particular problem. We're going to be taking we're going to be laying the groundwork to take care of that problem um, because I don't have all the necessary parts to take care of that specific problem. And that, what we're going to do today, is basically what I have set up here. Uh, so we see our uh, essence, essence berry bushes and our autonomous activators. And the autonomous activators will just, you know, keep right-clicking on the essence berry bushes. And eventually, once they grow, output essence berries. And I'm just throwing them in a chest there because they're slightly different. Well, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with them yet. I don't know if this is something that I want to add to the lockers of infinity. So I'm just leaving them there for now, and I'm not going to worry about it. Um, that might end up being used for something later. I just haven't researched it yet. Now, what we're going to do today is actually going to take place over here. Uh, because I have ready access to power right there, and it is going to involve the ore berry bushes. Now, I have the aluminum, the copper, the tin, and the iron. I do not have the gold ore berry bushes. I haven't seen a single one. So we can take care of these four. We can do these four, but I can't do the gold berry bushes, which is a little disappointing because, like I said, it's because I need the gold. Now, I could just use a whole bunch of these autonomous activators and just the ore berry bushes, and boom, you know, I have infinite ore berries. But, um, you know, to do anything with the ore berries, you have to cook them into nuggets and then put them together into bars and so on and so forth from there. So what I'm actually going to be doing is setting it up so that we're not outputting the ore berries, we're outputting blocks of metal. Um, now I could be doing this in a significantly easier way with Project Red. Um, specifically, if I type in at Project Red, if we look at uh, these pipes right here, the routed crafting pipe. Now, it's totally not hard to make routed junction pipes, some glowstone, some redstone. Well, I have a whole bunch of junction pipes. I have infinite glowstone and infinite redstone. I have plenty of stuff to make them. Uh, let's see. And then to use them, we just need the item crafting chip, which is lime illuminator. Uh, let's see. Lime, lime, uh bone meal and uh, cactus green. Okay, I can make that, no problem. Uh, however, the problem is that Project Red Transportation is a little glitched. Okay, it's a lot of glitched. Um, the, 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 the pipes don't work the way they're supposed to. They lose connectivity. Um, I mean, from what I could tell, the pipes I'm using now work and that's a good thing because i didn't i didn't know that they were broken uh when i when i first set those up i didn't know they were broken until i started doing research on how the f do i use a crafting pipe seriously i spent two hours looking up how to use a crafting pipe because the documentation on the official red or project red wiki 
is non-existent. It's just not there. It's not that it doesn't work well. It's just not existent. Uh, so uh, I figured out that what you have to do, you have to attach your crafting pipe to some form of automatic crafting table. So I'm like, okay, so auto crafting table, Project Red Hat auto crafting table. So auto, um, no, no auto crafting tables. Okay, so let's look up crafting. Nada. There is no automatic crafting table um, that I could find until I actually found YouTube videos on how to actually use these bloody things. What you have to use is a liquid. With, mm, yes, this guy right here, the Liquid Crafter, okay? And it's a uh, Mine Factory Reloaded thing. I have no idea what it's actually intended for, but you can use it as an automatic crafting table. Uh, but you have to set up redstone pulses to do it. And I'm like, you know what? Let's just go back to the way I was originally going to do this. And, you know, let's let's just do this and go nuts with it. Um, do I want to start here? Yes, I, I, I want to start here. Let's let's start here. Let's get out our shovel. Um, I'm recording this video fairly late. Um, I'm also going to try to explain what I'm doing. Let's close that off for now. I just dived down there to use the grinder to get a experience points. Um, but I have 51 levels, and I'm out of um, uh, uh, books. I haven't made any more books yet, so I just haven't fiddled with that yet. Anyways, um, so I'm going to try to explain what I've been doing while I'm building, which is going to be a first for me. Anyways, um, so I'm actually recording this fairly late for me. It is 11.30 my time. I usually record in between like 6 and 8. I don't want you there. And I'm already running out of seared bricks. Wow. Um, I didn't expect to be using this many seared bricks already. Eh, I should have expected it, I guess. But at least I'm somewhat prepared for that eventuality. Oh, I don't need those there anyways. I need these smeltery drains. See, I don't have to worry about it. Uh, don't have to worry about getting distracted because I'm always getting distracted. Um, we'll put these over here. Yeah, I'm always distracted, so... <laughs> Building things is kind of a pain in the butt for me. All right, so we have our smeltery drains. We need six of them, uh, and obviously they need to be on two sides. Uh, I put mine on opposite sides because this side's not really accessible because it's right up against the wall here that I'm not going to use. Uh, and this side I'm going to have access or connected to the rest of what we're building today. Um, so I have that part at least. One, two, three. One, two, three. I'm going to need one more because right here I'm going to put a controller and the seared tank. So we'll plunk down a controller. We'll plunk down the seared tank. And you know what? I have an extra smeltery drain for an extra output. Um... No, let's not put it there. Yes, I'm picking and choosing where I can put things. Let's put it here. Yeah, yeah. Oop. And basically, what I'm doing is I'm going to put an extra smeltery drain here for overflow. Okay, so now we have a full smeltery, which is kind of impressive. I did that with the stuff I had. I figured I'd have to make new ones. Eh, whatever. All right, so then we get our casting basins. Uh, we'll just plunk one down there. I don't have the, the, the piece that needs to go there for what we're doing, but that's okay. It's just for uh, secondary things. And we put down casting basins underneath each one of the smeltery drains, and then we put our fluid ducts connecting each one of these smeltery drains to the casting basins basins and i just realized i need a couple more things 
that I don't have on me, but I can use stone. Uh, do I have? Yes, I do. I need a diamond saw. Now, these are all connecting. I don't want these fluid ducts connecting at all, but uh, thermal expansion is smart enough to use the stone or to use covers. So if I plunk down a cover in between these, it breaks off the fluid ducts. And you could do these with item ducts and all that fun stuff. So the thermal expansion works with the micro blocks just like the Project Red pipes work with the micro, micro blocks. And I love that idea. I'm so glad they do that. Okay, and then I need... Oop. Let's actually just chuck up those in there for right now. I will get to that in a second. I need the pneumatic servos. And I need to put a pneumatic servo in each and every one of these. But conveniently, I only need six. Bloop. All right, and then I need the six different types of metals we can be dealing with. Now we can deal with aluminum, copper, tin, iron. As I said, I don't have gold, but uh, there is one thing we do have to worry about, and that is the combination of iron and aluminum. Uh, two parts iron to one part aluminum makes aluminum brass. And it is possible to get aluminum brass in this system, so we have to take it into account. Six. Now, uh, to take this stuff into account, what we have to do is go into our fluid duct that we just put our pneumatic servo in, set it to white list, and then put in the liquid metal that we want to white list. So this one's going to be gold. This one will be tin. And I'm just doing these in order. Um, yeah. They don't have to necessarily be in any form of order. I'm just doing it this way because that's the way they ended up in my inventory. Um, and we go around to the other side. We use iron. Boop. Then aluminum. Boop. And lastly, copper. Boop. And, of course, then we have to get our crescent hammer out and set these all to output. Because if we don't set them to output, they won't do anything. All right. And then basically what we have now is an individual casting basin for each and every type of metal that could possibly go into our uh, smeltery here. And I'm just realizing that I forgot the tanks uh, to make or to hold lava tank. How do I make tanks? Uh, we make tanks with a bunch of obsidian and a bunch of glass panes. Now, how many glass panes do I have? I need five to one, and I have not a lot, but I can make more glass panes easily enough. Boom. All right, so that gives me three and a half stacks, which uh, God only knows how many that splits into five. I guess I'll figure that out in a second. But of course, we have a whole crap ton of obsidian thanks to our obsidian lava generator, or obsidian generator over here. And that's always cool to have the parts that you need when you need them. So we will just quickly run through and create as many as I feel like making, basically all of them. That way I just, I always like building things in uh, bulk. That way I know I will always have everything that I need when I need it. Bloop. All right, so yeah, we have over a stack. Um, chuck our obsidian into the chest here, which will automatically get pulled out thanks to the pipes. Yay! So now I have a buttload of tanks, uh, dirt, and then basically what I'm going to do, is kill that guy, is put the tanks over the tinkers, or the smeltery, just like I did over there. That way, like that zombie right there, he won't fall in and screw up the entire system because he put his blood in there. Wee. Uh, 
Okie dokie. Now we take our lava fabricator, plunk it down right there. Uh, where's our fluidux? Fluidux there. There. There and there. No, there. Thank you. Take you out because I slipped. Turn you off because I don't want you doing that. Uh, let's just set you to output. I don't think... I. Do I have to do that? I forget. No, I do not. I don't even think I put a pneumatic servo in there. Boop. No, I did not. So the lava fabricator automatically outputs. So we don't even need to fiddle with this. Oh, no. I don't want you off. I just want you like that. All right. So then the lava fabricator will fill up our tank. And then we just need another fluid duct right there to fill up our seared tank. Hi, zombie. Uh, power, power, power. I hope I have enough to get to where I need to get to. Boop, 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 and a boop. All right, so now we have power. Now we have lava. Um, I don't know how this is going to work. When I did this over there, the seared tank was already full. So I've never actually tried to do it this way before. Um, hang on, let's go look over here. Do I have to set the output? Yes, I do. I could see it from here. So I have to set the output here. All right. That's still not dropping. Do I have to set a pneumatic servo maybe? I bet you I do. But conveniently I keep, or I carry a whole bunch of pneumatic servos. I actually made a, a lot of them. Bloop, bloop, bloop. All right, there we go. Now we have lava in the system. A lot of lava in the system. And it's building up fast too. That's awesome. Even though this thing just cannot keep up. It doesn't matter. It just has to work. All right. And then I want a hopper, which again, I, I'm always forgetting something, but that's normal for me. Boop. All right. So now we have our hopper and then basic, all the stuff that we're going to be uh, outputting from the other half of our system into the smeltery will go into the hopper. Um, I'm mildly curious. I don't know how to use this stuff or if I can use this stuff for anything. Like, how, do, how would I put the gold back into the system? Like, as far as I know of right now, I have six worthless buckets right here. I have no idea what to do with them. Not a clue. Um, all right. Anyway, so now what we have to do is set up an area to set to put down the ore berry bushes. Now, as you can see, I put down the uh, essence berry bushes right there. No fear. But the ore berry bushes are different. You can't just plunk them down. No matter how hard you try, you can't just plunk them down. All right, these mobs are getting annoying. I'm going to go take a nap real, real quick. I just remembered I was trying to explain what I was doing today, why, I, why I'm recording so late. Basically, what, what I'm doing is the place I work for, the restaurant I work for, is trying to set up a system to put music into its different areas. Uh, they've got four different areas they need to output music to. So... But we want this all central, controlled centrally. Like right now, they have an iPod plugged into the stereo. We want it controlled centrally. What the crap? I got hit by something. What did I get hit? Oh, okay. I see you. I see you. I couldn't see you before. All right. Anyways, uh, they want to output their music, or they want to control their music centrally. That way, somebody doesn't plug in their iPod and put on music, unauthorized music. Um, yeah, because, yeah, uh, don't want to authorize music, just be annoying. Um, 
So I, 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 we're using a combination of, hi, look, go away. <laughs> we're using a combination of raspberry pies and a program called Sling Light. Wait. No, squeeze light, squeeze light. Okay, uh, you may not have heard of it, and I wouldn't be—I would be surprised if you did. Um, wait, how am I gonna do this? Hang on, I need to think for a second. Open one, two, three, four, five, six. Open wall. Okay, and then I put in a uh, open. Uh, uh, Autonomous activator, berry, uh, one, two, three, four, five, open wall. So it's going to look, it's going to be kind of big, but that's okay. Now, the reason I'm doing it, uh, like I said, is you can't just put down the ore berry bushes. They have to be done a certain way. They have to be in the dark. I guess I have to pop these. Oh, I guess I would need an axe to pop these. Do I have an axe on me? I do not. Oh, I'm going to have to... Hmm. Let's see if I can move this over like two spaces. Um, what was I saying? You can't put the ore berry bushes down just in the light. You have to put the ore berry bushes down in the dark. And it has to be really, really dark. So, like, nighttime doesn't work. But uh, daytime does. Uh, I could pop these one over. So, let's do that. Uh, anyway, so I was setting up the raspberry pies uh, with the Slingbox soft or the, the Squeeze Lite software, which is Squeeze Box, if you've ever heard of Squeeze Box. And that's a service that I believe is currently owned by Logitech, but it wasn't invented by them. Uh, somebody else made it and Logitech bought it, which you're not going to get any arguments from me, really, from that, because that's how companies work. Uh, but Logitech isn't supporting it anymore they're like done with it so they open source the entire thing the client the server is pretty cool uh so somebody made an image for the raspberry pi which is a what's called headless uh slit or squeeze light client uh and what that means is that you just take the raspberry pi with this image you plug in your audio output power and some form of network connection. It supports... Um, uh, uh, blah, 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 blah. It supports wireless if you have the wireless card that's de com or compatible with it. I do. Uh, it's just a little Wi-Fi dongle thing. I don't even know what model it is. Uh, my dad bought it, actually. So this is actually all his. Um, and it's pretty cool. It runs, it's controlled completely by the Squeezebox server, the Logitech Media Server, as it's called. Oh, it's getting very windy. I wonder if it's going to rain again. But that's what I did all day. Basically, I sat around trying to figure out how this Squeezebox software works. Uh, because I am not experienced with Linux in any way, shape, or form. I quite suck at it. Um, so yeah, I had to learn that software. Conveniently, the software has its own web interface that I didn't even know existed until I started poking around the, the, the website. Um, yeah. I'm going to need more smooth stone, aren't I? One, two, three, four. Yes, I need a little bit more smooth stone. Not a lot. Uh, boop, boop. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to do something interesting here. Now, like I said, this needs to be dark. So we're not even talking this. We're talking that to the point where you really can't see it. Probably screws everything up in YouTube, which is going to 
suck hard. Um, one, two. I am going to open it all. No, I'm going to open a hole here. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to enclose this area and make it like a walking path um, like this. And enclose it as well. That way, if I do this right, no light gets into the system at all. Uh, I sh this should be far enough away that any light that does come in through the door bleeds off before it gets into the room. Now, of course, that means mobs are going to spawn down here. Yeah, that's perfect. Um, oh, the light stops two blocks down from the hole. That is perfect. Um, all right, what I'm going to do real quick, because I know you guys can't see that at all. YouTube does that. makes everything darker. So what I'm going to do real quick is grab all my ore berries, plant all of the ore berries. Well, not all of them. I'm just going to plant six initially six of each initially um and then i'll light it up because they should stick around yeah two three four five six perfect two uh yes two one two and then one two would be gold so that's perfect so now i should be able to put some torches in here ow i'm going to be doing that a lot so that we can light up the area and you guys can see what i'm doing uh but the orberry bushes will not grow you can't plant them in the light and they will not grow in the light um yeah i learned that on the on the the community mod server um, yeah, because I had a whole bunch of those guys set up as well. Uh, let's see, where's my autonomous activators? So let's pop in here, grab all of our autonomous activators, some pneumatic servos, put those away. Uh, item ducts, we will, oh, no, 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 I wanted to go the other way. Put some stuff away, so it's not in my inventory taking up space. Um, bloop, bloop, okay, that should work. That should be enough. Yeah, I'm going to have to worry about mob spawning. So what I'm going to do, one, two, three, four, five, six, is I'm actually ow, going to uh, where I'm not putting ore berries or autonomous activators, I will put uh, pipes or slabs because mobs won't spawn on the bottom part of slabs. Oh, I screwed this up. Crap. Um, can I do it anyways? I think so. Um, what I wanted to do... Yeah, what I wanted to do was set it up so that I could sit another autonomous activator on top of these because the Orberry bushes stack. Um, you could put two on, or put one on top of the other. You can stack them up probably as high as you want to. But they only stack when they're fully grown. Like, they won't stack there. They won't stack there. Yeah. Uh, but I need some way to output this stuff. And that some way, the way I have this set up, that some way is on top or underneath. Um... Let's do the underneath, because that's just going to be the easiest way. Too far with the dirt, but that's fine. Uh, boop. Now, if I was smart, which I'm not, I would have actually put an extra space in between uh, the autonomous activators and the previous orberry bush that way i could put the pipes behind but uh, i wasn't thinking i thought of that when i uh, was originally planning this and i forgot while i was recording eh. oh that means this is gonna be a pain in the ass because i put gotta put that down 
then I got to put in my pneumatic servo. Then I've got to, well, with an empty hand, go in here, set that to ignored, and then flip that, and then do it for the next one. Oh, this is going to be a slightly annoying, but long drawn out. Let's see if I can finish my story. Um, so I was setting up the squeeze box machines, or the Raspberry Pis, and we were just figuring out all the stuff, because the Raspberry Pis are really cool. You can, uh, if you know how, you can pretty much program them to do anything. Uh, like the, the Logitech Media Server that I was saying about the squeeze box server, Mine runs on top of Windows. There are Linux versions and there are Mac versions, but I run a Windows file server. I, yeah, I already run a Windows server. I don't need to run another one, so I just use the Windows side. Um, and it, uh, it works fine, but the Raspberry Pi can also run the Squeezebox server. And if I say Slingbox, like, I, I know I keep trying to say Slingbox. Slingbox is something else that's actually streaming TV. Uh, and if I say Slingbox, I actually mean Squeezebox. I just kind of tend to mix things up in my head. Uh, it's dyslexia, the true definition of dyslexia, not what a lot of people just consider dyslexia. Um, yeah, I mix... A lot of things up it actually makes it hard to talk sometimes which I'm actually mildly surprised that I'm concentrating this well on talking to you guys and building this at the same time um, yeah because I usually have a problem doing two outputs at once um, and when I say two outputs at once I mean I'm outputting the information needed to control my hands to build this as well as outputting completely separate information when I'm telling stories makes it kind of hard um, but I'm learning I guess I started learning how to do this in whoopsie doodle what the hell round robin <coughs> excuse me is that a new mode I did not see that the last time I fiddled with this. And I haven't had an update before then, so... I don't know. I, I, I really don't know. Uh, where's my shovel? There's my shovel. I'm just going to open this up, and then I'll just take the pipes like this. All right, so now it will output everything from the autonomous activators. Oh, but I do have to do one more thing, and I caught this while I was testing it. All right, so the configuration for the autonomous activators by default is it will output to the back. We don't want that. We want it to output to the bottom. So I have to go and change all of these. Now, if I had been smart and done it the proper way, ooh, the proper way, the way I wanted to initially, I wouldn't have to change all of these because they would already be pointed in the right direction. So, yeah, that doesn't help. Boop, boop. Um, so, let's see. Uh, I've, I just figured this out. If you left-click, you go through the selections in one order. If you right-click, you go through the selections in a different order. Um, yeah, so, let's see. Left-click, right-click, done. Oh, that thing grew. All right, so apparently these things do grow in the light. Did you output anything yet? No. I don't know. I just know they seem to work better in the dark. So that's what I'm going with. Uh, yeah. Boing. Whoops, no. That one. That one. Okay. Uh, I told you I'm dyslexic. Uh, I accidentally, instead of, or instead of left clicking, right clicking, I left clicked and right clicked. So, but being dyslexic does have its advantages. 
I see things backwards. Yeah, there we go. We got our first copper ore berry. Nice. Uh, hopefully this works. I had a problem with... Ow. The tin ore berries in testing. Uh, I guess technically it wasn't a problem with the tin ore berries specifically. It was a problem with Tinker's construct and outputting tin. It refused, refused to output tin through the fluid ducts into the basin no matter what I did, and it was weird. Uh, all right, so what I need to do, I need to take my item duct, put it there, and I'm just gonna pop a hole straight in here, and then put straight item ducts there. Uh, what I want to do, not with anything in my inventory right now, all right, is, because again, like I said, these work best in the dark. So what I want to do is set up a dark room here. Boop, 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 boop. Um, so something like that. Of course, it's not going to work all that well because the smeltery controller produces light. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. So then we go back into here and we take our output pipe, which I am just going to extend right there. And I will run it up the wall and connect there. Now, everything in the autonomous activator will automatically go into. Whoop, I lost it. Let's see if I can get out there fast enough so we can see it. Nope. Missed it. Or it just hasn't made it through the pipes yet. Like I said, the ducts are slow. Like crazy, crazy slow. Um, there it is. Okay, so the copper ore berries in here now. And then it will cook up and output into its respective... Um, there we go. It'll output into this basin here once it starts cooking or once it actually cooks. And Tinker's Construct takes a little while to cook, and that's fine. Um, now, the reason I have this basin back here is because these fluid ducts won't instantly pull out the correct fluid. So, like, if I had, say... Um, uh, obsidian, liquid obsidian in here in the smeltery, and it was at the bottom, uh, the copper ore berry will go on top of it, but it will never come out these ducts into the basin. Never. Because the obsidian takes priority. That's why I have the tank on here to prevent zombies from getting in and dying and leaving their blood. This is why this... Uh, smeltery is dedicated to this setup here and is actually closed off for this exact reason um boom boom because i can't do anything else this is my only choice uh if i do anything else with this smeltery it breaks i would have to output everything from the smeltery into a, something else a casting basin, a, a casting table, or whatever it's called, before it the system will work again. Um, we. So then, right now, what will happen is that these will grow ever so slowly. They will grow their ore berries. Their ore berries will be picked. They will go into the item duct, out into thermal or into Tinker's Construct Smeltery, which I can see from here. That's awesome. Um, and we can see that there's no copper in here right now. The copper berry is gone, but there's no copper in here. Whoop. Whee. It is in here, in our casting basin. Now, this is slow. I do have a choice... What I could do 
is I could have put the casting table. What's that thing called? Uh, yeah, the casting table. I could have put the casting table in there with a bunch of ingot casts. Uh, but the end result that I want is blocks of metal. So, I mean, this is the direct route. So I'm going to go with that. Um, what else is there? Like I said, I don't have any gold or berry bushes. I'm going to be hunting for them, but uh, they will go right there. I don't even have enough autonomous activators to put in place. Oh, well. I can at least prepare the system. Yeah. So once I get the gold war berries, they'll go there. Uh, the next autonomous activator will go there. Uh, once these guys grow up, like, okay, so we have an iron ore berry. Let's go get the iron ore berry bushes. They are in here. Tin iron ore berry bushes. Ooh, this one might have to go three high. That's not going to work. Damn. Oh, I might have to tear this down. But anyway, so this iron ore berry is fully grown. And now you can plunk down an iron, a smaller iron ore berry bush on top of it. Now I'm mildly curious about something. Okay, it works now. But it didn't work outside. So does that mean that it's not based on light level? It's based on if it's inside or not. Because the game is smart enough to know if it's inside. Um, that's interesting. I bet you that's how it works, too. Because these are growing. Huh. I may have to do some testing to see if they grow faster in the dark or in the light. Because I thought it was based off of uh, light levels. But it seems to be based off of whether it's inside or not. Alrighty. Uh, well, let, let's go with that for right now. They have to be inside. If they're inside, they'll work. Uh, the essence berries work outside. But the ore berries work inside. I already have six concentrated essence berries. Yay. Uh, basically, what I might do, you could take the essence berries, and I think you can turn them into liquid essence, which is useful for other stuff. Um, I'm not 100% sure. I don't remember. But I'll be expanding that as it goes. Uh, anyways, uh, so iron ore berry bush... They stack. Another autonomous activator can go back here. A pipe can go on top of it. And then we can access two levels of iron ore berries. But as we can see, I have 11 ore berry bushes. So, yeah, I might, I might tear this all out. Expand it by one row for each uh, row. Which means I have to tear out my spot or my uh grinder or whatever i would call it my safety zone this thing i'd have to tear it out but that's okay i mean i did that for ender pearls and now that i've been to the end and back the right way instead of killing myself i can get as many ender pearls as i need so no fear there uh Alrighty, so there we go. We can, we at least this way. I mean, it's gonna be a little slow until uh, until I get it up to speed and get more of these ore berry bushes and pull everything out. So yeah, that's gonna happen. That is totally gonna happen. Um, so until it gets up to speed, it's gonna be a little slow. And even when it gets up to speed, it's going to be a little slow because the ore berries. Uh, let's see. I think you need a stack plus 16 of ore berries to make one block. Uh, yeah. It's gonna be a little slow, but that's okay. Um, and I do want gold ore berry bushes, so I'm gonna have to dig around for them. I'm not cheating doing any of this. I swear, I promise you, I will not cheat 
doing any of this. Everything that I am doing here, I am doing without administrative rights. I am not uh, using any commands. I'm not doing anything that any regular user on any Attack of the B Team server wouldn't be able to do. So if you're watching this and you're on an Attack of the B Team server, or you're running it in single player or whatever, you can do this as well without commands. Um, fair warning, beware the Project Red pipes. Uh, I crashed my single player world with them, with the crafting pipes specifically. And from what I'm understanding, the crafting pipes can crash servers, like kill servers. Uh, so can other things, apparently. Uh, the, 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 oh, what is it? Um, at, no, at Project Red. Um, these guys, the item stock keeper chips, apparently they straight up crash servers uh, on the new update. Uh, I, I don't know. I haven't fiddled with them. I have a general idea of what they do from their name, but outside of that, I, I know nothing about them. Uh, I have noticed no other problems from anything else in Project Red, but apparently Project Red Transportation, which is the pipes, is glitchy. So beware, be careful, and I will see you guys in the next episode. Uh, as always, like, favorite, subscribe, comment, all that fun YouTube stuff, which I still don't know if actually helps or not. And since it's YouTube, I will probably never know. YouTube is absolute crap at support, at end user support. Um, especially for the little guys. I think you have to be like million plus to actually be able to talk to somebody at YouTube. Um, I can submit suggestions. But I've submitted so many suggestions and never once got an actual answer. Anyway, so, uh, yeah, like, subscribe, comment. Um, what was the other thing? Favorite. Oh, yes, the favorite thing. Uh, like, subscribe, comment, favorite. And I will see you guys in the next episode. And as always, keep playing the game and have fun.